I'm going to ask John a question about something that that uh, I mean, we get tons of of questions on the website about target panic, and one of the things that that seems like a primary cause for a lot of people is trying to aim too tight. They want that pin to be right where they want it, and they want it to be locked in there, and then yeah. you know it's almost an unrealistic expectation of what's possible at full draw. What do you do? I mean, what does your sight picture look like when you're shooting, even at the, even at 100 yards? Are you locked on? No. Okay. No, I'm never locked on, and um, you know, I would probably like to describe this when I'm when I can hold my fist on a on a dot up there and kind of show people maybe exactly what my sight picture is like and really what I focus on during that shot process. Because we're gonna do it up there then. Yeah, you want to? locking on the target. If that's your focus, then you're gonna really start to want to freeze, and then you're gonna end up freezing under the target. Mm -hmm. So let's go up there and talk about what float should be allowable in your mind. Let's get that, one. that is soft. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to talk about how you hold the pin or, or what you're really focusing on and, and how tight you're trying to hold. Yeah, uh, so when it comes to, to expectations with your archery pin, your archery targets, <clears throat> you know, if this release aid right here is, or we'll use your Nikon. If this is my pin, you know, your pin is going to move around on the target. If you're trying to just lock it into one place, you know, we're, we're anatomy, we're muscle, we're bone. Things are gonna move. Some days you're gonna hold better than others. I mean, that's the reality. No different than some days you'll go out and run, you can run good. Some days you lift, you can lift strong. Some days you can't. So. Some days this is gonna move around and really the science behind it is your subconscious is really trying to do what you're telling it to do. And essentially, you know that if your pin is on the target that you're gonna hit that target. And, and really you're telling yourself, I wanna hit the center. I wanna hit this target. So when you cover that, your brain gets to the point where it, it it wants to hit the target, but it also wants confirmation that it's there. So the theory behind it is the subconscious actually moves enough so that you can continually verify that what you're really trying to see is behind the object that you're blocking it with. So movability and float is natural. And really, you know, at this distance, I'm probably floating around within, at least within that hole, you know, that hole. But what you have to do is you really have to be continual on your pressure against the back wall of the cam. You have to be dynamic and continually pull on the trigger until that surprisingly goes off so that you're pulling the system back. And as it trips, you're going forward with the bow and back with the bow and the bow is collapsing. And even if this is moving around, if you're dynamic in your shot, the arrows continually go to the middle. And really, what I like to, to explain to people is it's a lot like driving a car. If you're driving a car down a perfectly straight road, you don't ever just hold the wheel in one spot. Even if you have a perfect alignment, you're naturally floating left and floating right, but you're tracking center. So you really wanna be able to embrace that float and trust the float because you'll notice that even if you are moving, your subconscious is also returning it to center. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're embracing that movement, it's if it's going off, it's also immediately going back to center. Well, that's what I've noticed is that <clears throat> if it's not on the center, it's probably trying to get back to it. Yep, so yes. you have this natural centering tendency and it's almost like this mystery, like you'll, you know, when I was introducing our son to shooting this way, he couldn't believe the fact that his pin would be floating around and he'd still hit the spot. Yep, yes. There's something weird about it. Yeah. Because oh yeah. you don't even know. I mean, you're, you, you might feel like your pin's out here yep. when you shoot, but yet the, still the arrow finds the middle. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a strange sensation until you get used to doing it. And that's, that's the mystery. But what's known is if you lock here, yeah. they're going to all shoot there until you start getting in the habit of lifting and punching. And when you lift and punch, the arrow is only going to hit wherever this was when the arrow clears the bow. And that's what we call target panic. What right. most people call target panic. It's yeah. trying to aim too tight and trying to tell the bow now. 
yeah. tell, trying to tell yeah. it when to go. Yeah, it's anticipation. Yeah. Essentially, target panic is an anxiety. It's a sudden fear or fright, and normally it's a fright of missing, when the reality is you're actually forcing yourself to miss because you're actually not putting your pin on the target. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of this very polar opposite effect. It's this battle within the brain, but you want to be able to just trust what your subconscious is doing mm -hmm. and consciously pull through the shot and let the subconscious take control of the centering. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I appreciate it. That's yeah, good. No That's good problem. information. Uh, I think I'm going to redeem myself on two more arrows. Okay. <laughs>